Sigma Tiger News, all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? World War III got canceled. Cat rapist. I've heard about a cat burglar, but not a rapist. Sydney stabbings and white thug. Look out. <laughs> Welcome to Sigma Tiger News, where you get the hottest, juiciest beef online. And if you've been living under a rock, then you missed uh, Joe Biden basically stopped World War III. <laughs> not even close. He uh, asked Iran to not attack Israel. Don't, he said. That was his message. Don't attack Israel. And, uh, of course, because he's such a great leader and feared in the uh, in the global uh, political sphere, uh, this is what happened. All right, we got another video here. Check this one. So what is this? The worst uh, fireworks show on earth? No, it is uh, Iran sending a ton of uh, missiles and drones at Israel, just totally blowing off Biden, who actually unlocked like $232 billion for them. Wonder what happened with that. Maybe they bought a bunch of rockets. Uh, Fact-finding analysts uh, highlights. So anyway, Iran came out and said, guess what? This is all the damage we did. And they aired a clip from Chile, uh, wildfires. So they're now the laughing stock of the Middle East. Uh, all the Arab nations think uh, Iran's an absolute joke. Uh, and obviously they are, because guess what? They launched 350 missiles and drones overnight with a combined 60 tons of explosives. And guess what? I believe two cruise missiles got through. There was one child injured. That's it. And how could that be possible? Well, they have what's called the Iron Dome Missile Defense System. Uh, that the U.S. pays like $50 billion to help support each year. Um, well, guess what? It just shoots them out of the sky. Pew, 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 pew. No big deal. We're still in the midst of a significant operational day after thwarting the Iranian attack. In the last few hours, we've held assessments and approved plans for defense and attack. Ooh, well, uh, are they going to attack back? No, the answer is they contacted the U.N. and they're looking for sanctions against Iran. And... Uh, yeah, so they said no further attack, and Biden then got on the phone with uh, Netanyahu, or BB, whatever his name is, and he was like, hey, if you go forward and attack Iran, we're not going to back you up, okay? We're not going to do it. Like, no one's listening to me as I shuffle away. All right, moving right along. So World War III was averted, but uh, guess what? There's still uh, terrible human beings all over this planet, and here's one of them from New Jersey. He was a cat rapist. He pled guilty to sadistic torture and killing of a pet. 19-year-old man confessed to the appalling and prolonged torture of his pet cat that ended with him throwing the animal's corpse out a window last year. Bonnie Mezquitla pleaded guilty to two counts of third-degree animal cruelty in Superior Court in Monmouth County on Tuesday. Prosecutors will recommend five years in state prison for uh, Mekitla as part of the plea agreement. He will be ordered to pay restitution to the cat's necropsy and barred from... Um, Owning or living with animals. Sentencing is scheduled for June 13th. Image of the cat. Poor little kitty. Uh, so the Ashbury Park Police arrested uh, Mesquititla on the 2nd of March after his roommate found the corpse of his pet cat, Ellie, and reported it to police. Mesquititla, uh, in court Tuesday, admitted to performing sex acts on the cat in the weeks leading up to the killing of sexual abuse, which included intercourse and the use of a pencil cause serious physical injuries. Prosecutors say the teen showed his roommate photos of the torture he inflicted on the animal. So, uh, uh, an astounding cry for help. Mescatitla 
uh, also admitted to strangling the cat to death using a phone cord before throwing it out of his apartment window. I'm sure he felt great about that. Got rid of the evidence there. The Monmouth County Prosecutor's Office defended Miss Kittle's sentence as fully appropriate in the statement. It should be worse. Like, I don't care. Like, if you have that mentality where you're going to do that to an animal, then uh, guess what? It's going to escalate to humans because that's typically what happens. Uh, under New Jersey law, there's a presumption of non-incarceration for defendants convicted of third-degree criminal offenses in the absence of any criminal history, as was the case in this matter. As such, due to the seriousness of the conduct, the state's plea offer went far beyond that as if its provisions are granted by the court it would rank among the most severe penalties ever levied against an individual charged with animal cruelty in new jersey while other crimes can result in decades in prison even the most depraved animal abuse can only be charged a third degree crime any third degree offense in new jersey carries a maximum sentence of five years in prison there you have it and uh, just so people who don't know uh in california it's only a misdemeanor to sexually assault a child which should be a felony so check that out because that's a fact Way to go, California. Uh, Canadian judge blocks imminent euthanasia death of 27-year-old autistic woman. So what's the problem here? Well, Canada has a program called MAID, M-A-I-D. And uh, if you are dying or uh, basically uh, have a death sentence given to you by a doctor, then uh, you can go ahead and apply for MAID and they will go ahead and end your life for you. No problem. Uh, Justice Ann Kirker issued a stay pending a determination of an appeal in the case by the woman's father who has been trying to prevent her assisted suicide. Uh, Calgary, Alberta, a Canadian judge stopped, for now at least, the planned euthanasia death of a 27-year-old autistic woman after ruling in favor of her father who appealed another judge's decision to allow the woman to go ahead with taking her life uh, despite his objections. On April 8th, Justice Ann Kirker issued a stay of the injunction pending determination of an appeal. In the case, 27-year-old autistic cowgirl and his father has been trying to prevent her death by euthanasia, as noted by Alex Schadenberg, Executive Director of the Euthanasia Prevention Coalition. As a result, the woman will not be allowed to die by euthanasia under the Court of Appeal, makes a final decision in the court case. Uh, Kirker ordered stay of the injunction. The trial has been tentatively set to start in October, so she's going to have to wait quite a while. Um... There's a publication ban. All right, LifeSite News reported that a Calgary judge ruled the autistic non-terminally ill young woman. Non-terminally ill, that's the key. She's not terminally ill. She's not going to die on her own quickly or within a relative time frame to be like, okay, it could be painful and cruel, so let's just give her the benefit of the doubt and, and get rid of her now. Well, guess what? She's autistic. She's having a hard time with life, and she just doesn't like it, and she wants to die. Is that a reason? The only reason she was approved is because she's autistic. So if that is the threshold, then uh, that's not looking good because the number of autistic people is increasing. And why? Well, we don't know. Maybe it's because life's too crazy and parents are stressed out and when they produce eggs, their eggs are duds. We don't know. It's a disorder. It's a neurological disorder. Is there something wrong with being autistic? No. It's just not what's traditional or typical I guess we would say, of a human functioning brain. But it is growing. Uh, the father argued his daughter is vulnerable and is not competent to make the decision to take her life on her own. And therein lies the issue. All right, so we'll keep you posted on that. So, yeah, and if you don't know what's going on, if you've, if you've uh, literally had your TV off or you're at the cabin all weekend, uh, some crazy maniac in Sydney, Australia, went into a shopping mall with a knife and started swinging it around and killed like seven people. Uh, they say terror is not ruled out as a motive, but I think we're going to rule that out very shortly. Um, let's see exactly what happened. Six people were killed and several others injured, including a small child, when a knife-wheeling attacker rampaged through a busy Sydney shopping center on Saturday. Multiple people were stabbed as the unidentified assailant who was shot dead by a police woman at the scene. Congratulations. The incident occurred at the sprawling Westfield Bondi Junction Mall complex. On Saturday afternoon shoppers, I'm advised that there are five victims who are now deceased as a result of the actions of the offenders, said New South Wales Police Assistant Commissioner Anthony Cook. The death toll later rose to six. The motive was not immediately clear, but Cook said terrorism could not be ruled out at this stage. Uh, yeah, okay, so he went in there and started stabbing people. One of the big stories is, is that he uh, stabbed a woman and her child who was in her little, uh, her little baby carriage, and the woman in her dying moments handed the baby off to someone else while defending from the wielding attacker, and then she later succumbed to her injuries, and the baby's in hospital now in critical condition. So we all pray for the, the soul of the woman and the life of the child. And we'll see what's going on with the crazy psychopath, uh, Joe Kachi. 
So he's been revealed his identity, offered services on sex work sites before shopping center massacre that left six dead, nine month old fighting for life. As his family released a statement branding his attack truly horrific, absolutely, he carried out the city shopping center massacre, had a secret life as an escort offering sexual services online to men and women. So he's probably demonized in some fashion there uh, when he's going out there and just offering sex as a, a means to gain money to whomever will take it. A new data tells have merged about Joe Couchy, who murdered six people and left a nine-month-old baby fighting for her life following Saturday's stabbing rampage. Um, yeah. So he was 40. He had listed himself at several male escort websites. Uh, his biography describes himself as an athletic, good-looking 39-year-old based in Sydney who's looking for a fun time and offered dozens of closed-door services, which are too graphic to publish. Image of the individual. A white thug. Not a terrorist by any, any means. It seems. Hair color black, hair type short, green eyes, body type solid. Bust female appendage, male cut. So there you go. And here is an image with the knife, large chef's knife by the look of it, flowers adorning the mall. After identifying Couchy as the man behind Saturday's stabbing, Assistant Commissioner Anthony Cook said he was known to police and was very clearly suffering from mental health issues. No doubt. I'm sure. Uh, it would have been worse if they didn't kill him. So anyway, uh, pray for the lost souls. And uh, we found out that it wasn't a terrorist attack, God, thankfully. All right, so transgender boxer Patricio Manuel issues defiant statement after getting knocked out in 21 seconds. So uh, if you're looking at the image here, this is uh, a biological woman who's obviously on a ton of drugs to achieve this body. Um, transgender boxer Patricio Manuel is defiant despite suffering a knockout blow 21 seconds into a bout in Fantasy Springs Casino in Indio, California. Born Patricia Manuel, the boxer was a five-time female amateur boxing champion and even participated in the 2020 U.S. Olympic trials. However, she had to bow out due to an injury. But in 2013, Manuel began to transition into a male and by 2014 had undergone full transgender surgery. So for over 10 years, this individual has been living uh, in the uh, uh, re- Formed body of a man. As a male boxer, Manuel has won three fights in a row, but that streak ended April 4th when opponent Joshua Bryan Race stepped in the ring and decked Manuel in just 21 seconds. Manuel is defiant in a message on Instagram saying that now is not the time to give up in the ring, according to TalkSport. I'm not one to hide my face no matter the outcome. I lost last night. I trained my ass off and had great sparring, cut no corners, but sometimes uh, shit doesn't go your way. It's a risk we all take when we step in the ring. It is what exciting about boxing and almost most heartbreaking. The most important part is I'm healthy, I'm deeply disappointed, and to be honest, my ego is bruised, but I refuse to bow my head in shame. I've never been one to play it safe, and sometimes that means I fail. And life's taught me over and over again that failure will not break me. Thank you to everyone who's been and hopefully will be still in my corner. Manuel is the only boxer born female to compete professionally in the male category. And, uh, well, there you have it, you know what I mean, was able to beat three uh, previous opponents. And uh, so throw it down in the comments, legit or not legit. What do you think? Like, uh, should uh, the individual continue boxing? Should they be allowed to box? Like, is, like isn't it possible? that uh, with her new physical form, she could injure uh, another man, potentially. But if it was the opposite, if it was a man in female boxing, that's the story we're waiting for. So we'll keep you posted. Uh, Maxwell Anderson charged with killing, mutilating 19-year-old Sadie Robinson. So here we have the white thug, not this individual. Um, Maxwell Anderson, 33, have been charged in connection with the death and disappearance of 19-year-old uh, Sadie Robinson. Investigators say Anderson intentionally killed and dismembered Robinson with the intent to conceal the murder. Anderson has been charged with first-degree intentional homicide, mutilating a corpse, and arson of property other than a building. According to the criminal complaint, investigators used cell phone data and surveillance footage to piece together the details of what happened to Robinson. The complaint says Monday on April 1st, Anderson Robinson met the for a first date at Twisted Fisherman, a seafood restaurant located in Canal Street, Milwaukee. Investigators say surveillance footage shows the two sitting at the same table and eating at a restaurant around 5.30 p.m., leaving just before 6.30. Investigators used Life360, an app that provides the location of mobile devices to track Robinson's phone the night of April 1st. The data show Robinson's phone traveled from Twisted Fisherman to the area of Dukes on Water and then the area of Anderson's restaurant near 39th in Oklahoma. Robinson's device, according to the complainant, then traveled to the area of Warning Mont Park between 2 and 3 a.m., the area where officials made the first disturbing discovery hours later. 
Just after 7.30 a.m. April 2nd, officials found Ramos's 2022, sorry, 2020 Honda Civic torched near 29th in Lisbon. Video surveillance shows Anderson leaving the scene and getting on a Milwaukee County Transit bus just after 8 a.m., heading south towards his home around 5.30 p.m. The Milwaukee County Sheriff's located a severed leg in Warnemont Park. Just after 1 a.m. April 4th, Anderson was pulled over near 38th and Lakefield Drive by the Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office in a traffic stop that led to his arrest. In his car was the clothing he was wearing when he allegedly torched Robinson's car. That same day, investigators executed a search warrant at Anderson's res residence. According to the complaint, blood was found on the bedding in one of the bedrooms and on the walls leading towards the basement. Several gasoline can containers were also found. April 6th, officials found a human foot while searching the area of 31st and Galana. According to the criminal complainant, the leg found in Warnon Park appeared to be from the same individual as the foot found in 31st in Galena, particularly due to the skin tone size and having matching pink nail polish. The complainant says an analysis done on the Wisconsin State Crime Lab shows DNA from the leg found in Warnon Park determined the remains belonged to Robinson. A probable cause statement was issued for Anderson's arrest and uh, he was placed into custody last week. 72 hour hold until blood evidence has been processed and before any formal charges could drop. According to the court documents, 2014, Anderson pled guilty to disorderly conduct charge. That same year, he was also charged with domestic abuse. That charge was later dismissed. 2015, court documents show he was found guilty of domestic abuse, intimidating a witness, and criminal damage to property. 2019, he was found guilty for his second offense of driving while under the influence. And 2022, he was found guilty of driving with a suspended license. So a career criminal uh, fall off the rails uh, about 12 years ago and escalated thoroughly throughout. So he didn't receive the correct therapy, didn't receive any sort of punishment that would deter his crimes. And he went ahead and murdered someone. God rest Sadie Robinson's soul. And uh, if you ever find yourself stuck on an island, what should you do? You shoot your shot, man. And you do exactly what your mind tells you. And you go ahead and get some trees and branches. And you spell out help. I mean, it didn't work for Tom Hanks in Castaway. But uh, the U.S. Coast Guard and Navy were able to successfully rescue three sailors who were stranded on a small specific island, Pacific Island, for over a week after they spelled help in the sand with palm tree leaves. The three men, all in their 40s, left Easter Sunday on a 20-foot skiff from uh, Palawat to Pigalot. Both places are two small Pacific islands that make up the Micronesia Ar Archipelago, the Coast Guard said. Six days later on Saturday, a woman called the Coast Guard to report that her uncles had not returned from Pigalot, which is about 100 nautical miles from where they began. A week later, <laughs> come on, well, I guess it is a niece. But regardless, thank you for calling. Coast Guard Rescue Center in Guam began a search but had challenges due to weather and the availability of resources. Navy aircraft stationed in Japan and the Coast Guard ship Oliver Henry then joined the mission. Crews searched an area uh, for more than 78,000 square nautical miles and the aircraft, Navy aircraft spotted the trio's palm tree leaf message the following day. The act of ingenuity was pivotal in guiding rescue efforts directly to their location. Boom! It's not a stupid idea. Go get the logs, palm tree leaves, whatever. Every morning you wake up, go out there, set them up, make sure it says help. And hopefully you have a niece that cares about you enough and will call and say, please, my uncles are somewhere lost at sea. And there you have it. What a way to start the week. We, av we averted World War III. There's still a bunch of psycho people out there. There's uh, Mexicans, Asians, blacks, whites. They're all crazy. But under the skin, we're all the same within. Remember that racism's fake and all the oppression they try to put on you or all the colonialism uh, they pile on, it's all fake. Just ignore it. Be yourself. Stand up for yourself no matter what. But don't be a jerk and keep it real. Try not to hurt anybody with your words or with your fists. Sigma Tiger, signing out.